viewers and subscribers, you're welcome back again. This is BVI Channel 1, where you get undiluted truth. Oh, yes. Talking about the man in Asorok and the purported plan to have a military intervention in Niger. This is how the Nigerians <laughs> will be welcoming him anytime he visits. Wow, just take a look at this banner. Bola, Ebola, Tinibu. But if you take a look at these uh, pictures there, look closely. It seems that the person who select these pictures there was following exactly what was happening during the election. See the one where Tinibu they sleep for meeting with uh, so, uh, with, uh, with an emir. You know, remember, you remember that meeting? You see all the pictures. You see all the pictures there. Now here they look. Now those pictures that they look. Say so, so the whole world they see this thing and see they happen. And no say Nigerians don't fit vote this man as the president. That's why they are reacting the way they are reacting. Believing that this man is not a legitimate president to come and invade their country. speaking these guys are not smiling and this is a direct message from the nigerians to tinibu telling him nigerians are not like nigerians you know we nigerians we are so tolerant but these guys nigerians eh, they no get joy and this is how they will welcome jagaban if he steps his foot in Niger with his military intervention. Now, let's think of it. How can a man who is, you know, not just accused, but it is clear that he's running an illegitimate government, that he came to power through the back door by what we call civilian coup? or democratic coup what makes the difference you're trying to criticize or have a military intervention against a nation that rose up to end a government that is so infested with corruption and impunity a country that has the highest deposit of uranium which is the most sought out for for nuclear power across the world yet their citizens are languishing in poverty in fact they are the second most impoverished country i don't think that nigerians are nigerians who on their own part has enormous resources being cutted away and plundered by political class they will just fold their hands and look at Kimbo. I want to remind Tinibu that the military in Niger is not as corrupt as the military in Nigeria. That is the truth. Because if the Nigerian military is living up to expectation based on what Babangida said. On the outside, we knew in 1982, no, 83, that when you had an election and Shagari was voted in as in his second term as a democratically, democratically elected president, we could have Trouble that government in 1982 before the elections. And then we said, no, the people might go against us. We knew damn well that they are not or they were not going to conduct that election truly and fairly. And therefore, you see, to stage a coup, there is one basic element that everybody looks for. 
frustration in the society. Frustration in society. Right. So by 1983 when you voted, everybody was not happy. It was rigged, it was this, it was that, and the frustration built up. We find who easier when there is frustration in society. That is the only criteria why military considers intervening or plotting coup or overthrowing any government. Now, put it on the table. Tinibu, he never reached pass within Una government. APC under Bugari, APC under Tinibu have done to warrant military coup. Una don't do pass. Una don't reach pass. But because the military in Nigeria is so corrupt, they are also so deeply involved in oil theft and other corrupt practices. We're no longer talking about the deal. You know, insecurity has become a huge catch cow, a huge um, economic sector where the ogres at the top are making billions. We know that. So in all of this, considering the entire confusion, they cannot plot a coup. So because of that, you think that because Nigeria had become so docile to this point that uh, you can do anything and get away with it, I think that it's the same thing with the Nigerians. No. Their military are not as corrupt as Nigerian military. And their people are not as docile as Nigerians who are so tolerant and so accommodative and many of them waiting for their own opportunity to steal because stealing had become the order of the day i mean public funds with any slightest opportunity so <laughs> that is just the truth and that is exactly the message you're seeing from that street demonstration by nigerians you cannot be a kettle and be calling pot black. That is just it. I make in the and one thing I, I, I like about this whole thing is that they they left Nigeria out of their own altercation. They didn't try to drag Nigerians into it. They were after the very man they know. Say him be keto and yet calling pot black. <laughs> well, that is just it. Nigerians, when they see how this man they drag himself for mud, no be we Nigerians see they drag for mud because the people know say he is running an illegitimate government. But we are hoping, we Nigerians, very tolerant people, we are hoping that the tribunal will do the needful. But if that is not done, hey, 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 no blame anybody you because there will be kitty kitty and kata kata. Yeah, that is just the truth. If the judge fails to do the right thing, after seeing this enormous evidence that even the blind can see and the deaf can hear, what happened in Nigeria being a democratic coup by installing an illegitimate and unconstitutional government in power? If they fail to do the needful, don't blame anybody whatsoever becomes of Nigeria. I'm an advocate for good governance. I'm not a promoter of military coup or any chaos or violence. I believe in the rule of law. But only people that has respect for rule of law deserves our support and will continue advocating for good governance. So help me share this video to everyone. Let every Nigerian see what is happening. Kudos to Niger Republicans. They have truly fighting for their freedom. They are truly fighting for their freedom. Freedom from bad politicians. Bye-bye for now.